Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Raza Owen, a two-player tactical card game in which you are going to gather four magical characters, whether they be wizards or warriors or even mystical creatures, equip them with unique artifacts, relics, and of course weaponry, and attempt to vanquish your opponent's characters and send them to the void. You'll be tactically choosing characters, going back and forth, utilizing them to either cast or attack on your opponent's characters, dealing damage to them and removing them, and if you can do so before your opponent does the same to you, you'll win. Utilize your skills, your strategy, and your unique tactics in order to beat the game Raza Owen with four different unique decks that I have here to show you and a bunch of unique strategies as well as booster packs that you can pick up all down below. Link in the description tomorrow. Let's go ahead and check out down below what comes in the game and what it looks like. So let's discuss Raza Owen and what you're going to get in the game as well as the basics of how to play. Now the first thing is if you buy a starter deck here, this is what you're going to get. It's going to be a deck of cards as well as the fact that it's going to come with a die and it's going to come with these little tokens here which you'll utilize for life and ability power points, all that good stuff on your weapons. And then it's going to also give you one of these guys here which I believe is called spirit points. It's a spirit point board. It's basically what you're going to use as currency in order to play your skill cards here. Um, as you can see, right here is everything you're going to get. So you're going to get uh, options for uh, warriors. There's going to be four warriors. There'll be five weapons. And then there's going to be about, be about 30 skill cards that you'll need. And this is the basic amount of everything that you'll need in order to play the game with an additional weapon. Uh, then it's also going to have the, you'll have the option if you want to pick up a booster pack, a uh, Flare Fist is this one here. It's a booster pack for this main starting deck, allowing you to kind of customize your main deck a little more. Um, and of course, the rules will come in the base game. Uh, this is going to give you two new characters, uh, four new weapons, and then you're going to get a set of skill cards. And a lot of them here are going to be a little more complex, meaning you're going to get some more jumpers and longevity cards that will last a little longer while in play in the game. So that's all you need in order for you to have your own set. But remember, you need to play uh, with another player. So they're going to need their own starter deck as well. And maybe they want to pick up booster pack as well for more customizability but this right here this is starter deck plus booster pack of one specific faction what we have here these two sides here is we have two other factions in play uh, one of them is going to be aquila's gift and that's going to be the blue faction here and then we're also going to have the Voltus Strike Faction, which is this one over here. And I've set the game up as described in the rulebook. In the very beginning of the rulebook, it explains what you need. So first of all, you're going to have uh, your item zone. These are your artifacts and or your tomes and your weapons. And then above it is going to be your characters. You can never have more than two that have a total of five HP of the four that you're choosing. You will have your skill deck. You're going to have your utility deck. These are extra weapons you'll be able to utilize. You can never have more than 10 weapons total. And then you're going to go ahead over here and have an empty space for like your void, your longevity zone, and a spirit zone where you discard your skill cards. Voids are where you discard your weapons on your characters, and longevity is where you place out your skill cards that last for a long period of time. Um, then you're also going to have a die, which you'll use uh, throughout the game for various reasons, and then additional uh, red markers that will indicate when you place uh, specific tokens on your weaponry, uh, specifically using them for HP whenever you take damage. And then also, of course, for this here, which will denote how many points you have in order to spend for your skill cards. And that's pretty much how the de deck is set up. You're going to choose your four characters, choose your four weapons, set the rest aside face up, shuffle your skill deck, and draw five cards. And both players will do that. After that, then you're going to go ahead and begin turn. So one player is going to choose one of their characters to start the game, and they're going to turn it to their side, meaning that they are going to go ahead and utilize it. On your turn, you can either choose to attack or cast or pass. Passing is you're done. Attacking is you're utilizing your attack versus an opponent's defense and subtracting the difference, giving that uh, opponent damage. So in this case here, if I were to use my five to attack this three, he would take two damage with his total being four health, so he's still alive. If he would ever be reduced to zero, he would be removed from the game. Additionally, if this character had a weapon that had an attack on it, that would increase their attack. Whenever a character attacks or casts, that weapon of that character will get one of those tokens there. And whenever that token meets that number there, then you can utilize that ability. So for instance, this one says, whenever this specific character casts, you can remove one damage point from an equipped character. Wow, that's really useful. So it can basically be used to heal. Um, and each of these weapons will do different things as well. And after attacking and or casting, or so not and, but just or casting, you're going to go ahead and pass doing the damage to this specific character here. And this player over here will then get to go ahead and choose a character, like maybe this one here, eight damage, selecting something like, oh, I don't know, this one over here, 
8 minus 3 is 5. The total health on this character is 5. Thusly, he would perish and be put into the void. Now, that seems all pretty simple, right? But if you actually have cards in your hand, which you should, you'll be able to utilize cards like jumpers, for instance, this card here, which will allow you to do things on the fly. This one will cost three points. And it says here, character is chosen for an attack with a defense higher than the defense of the attacking character. That's the requirement. They'll gain a damage point from the attack damage. If not vanquished, the attacking character gains a damage point uh, for the specific battle outcome of that stage. Um, and of course, some of these are going to go ahead and prevent you from taking damage. There's blocks, there's attacks. Uh, this one over here lets you counter. So before an action or skill activation is chosen from a character, uh, of your field, um, a character on your field does not gain damage from that specific one. So this actually protects your, one of your characters. So this character could have been protected utilizing this card by spending three spirit points, uh, one, two, and three. Another thing to note too is, of course, these guys are going to go into their the area here for their discard. This will be in your hand. And another thing to note is when you attack, you're going to gain these points here. There's also going to be cards in the game that will give you them as well. And of course, whenever you cast, you can gain a point as well. So attacking and casting will generate points here. Cards will generate points there, which you can then utilize for the cards in your hand, those skill cards that will protect your characters and also increase their damage and potential. Basically, after everybody has either attacked or cast, then that is going to signal the end of a round. And when that happens, everybody can go ahead and discard as many of the skill cards as they want, draw back up to five skill cards, and they would both go ahead and do this. And then everybody would turn all of their characters over. Damage would still reside, and so would any longevity effects. Any one of these action cards that stays in play forever will still, will still stay there. But otherwise, it will just continue. And if this was the last player's turn, then he is going to begin the game, choosing a character turning it to the side and attacking. And that's pretty much the entirety of the game. Now, of course, each of these characters have unique abilities that you have to look at and take a, for instance, we'll go and take a glimpse of this one. On your turn, if the spirit power gained from the battle outcome is five or more, you can refresh your hand. It's very, very powerful. Or maybe once around, you can gain spirit power from a card. Of, uh, when you gain a spirit power from a card effect, you'll gain one more. And remember, if it's once around, a round is an entirety of play, turning all these guys over, whereas a turn is just turning one of them over. So in this case, you'd only be able to gain one of these points here, and you start with five, uh, whenever, uh, during a round, as long as you meet that condition. So it would just go up once. It wouldn't go up twice. And that's it. That's the basic idea of Raza Owen, uh, how to play the game. Of course, there's unique uh, aspects to the game as far as putting decks together. For instance, you can only have 30 skill cards. You can only have 10 weapons. You can only ever have four characters, but you can kind of cycle through them or choose different characters, maybe with uh, different types on them to allow you to use different cards. Because in general, all these cards in your starter deck are either going to be cards that allow you to use them for uh, any character or specifically for your faction, which is going to be that Thunder one for this specific character deck here. And that's it. Let's go ahead and discuss my review for the game. Let's discuss the game. And of course, the first thing I want to talk about is that this game is a tactical two-player card game. So if you're looking for a game with more than two players, probably not the one for you. However, I'm sure you could probably play with more than two players. Uh, if you do teams specifically, that would probably work. Um, in the game, you're going to be selecting a specific deck. So you'll buy a deck of cards. It'll give you everything you need to play. You're going to be getting either maybe the, the lightning characters or the fire or the water. They have specific spell restrictions and weapon restrictions as to what you can play with them, but you can combine them with other characters that they can then utilize spells and you can kind of formulate your own unique specific deck with all the different types of elements in them and all the different specific characters. You can only play with a certain type of a certain limit of health for each of the characters so you can only have two characters with five health in the deck and so you have to choose wisely among the stronger characters you want to utilize maybe some supportive characters on top of them and then you also want to of course equip them with weapons and weapons are going to be versatile but useful for specific characters so you don't want to equip a wizard with maybe a battle axe it might not be as well as maybe a tome or maybe something like a staff and uh, you're going to be going back and forth it's similar to games like I guess Warlords or Magic the Gathering in the sense that you're going to be turning characters over going back and forth on those turns until all characters have been turned over and then coming back up it plays really quick and very easy to understand you're going to attack or cast on your turn or use an action on one of your weapons and attempt to do damage to your opponents and they're going to utilize their skills a strategy with their spirit power or spell power uh, sacrificing that playing cards like your jumper cards as instance to a, a 
aggressively defend or aggressively attack uh, your opponents or yourself, depending on what you're trying to do. And of course, if you can eliminate players or characters, you're going to start getting an edge up in the game. But remember that each of these decks are pretty, they work pretty well uh, against each other. So it's going to be a lot of good balancing this game. It might seem like you're down and out, but with a lot of spell power, you're going to be able to come back utilizing that and defeating your opponents with specific spells. Uh, the card game has got some really good artwork. For instance, it's got a lot of these really cool weaponry that I'm really, really fond of. Uh, a lot of the beasts I really enjoy. Uh, the character models I think are all right. Uh, so it, some of it works for me and some of it doesn't work as well. But I personally really, really enjoy the weaponry and whatnot. And characters, like I said, not so much. Um, the way the spell power works, the, the, the mana or whatever you want to call it, the currency in the game that you're going to use in order to use your spells is interesting. You're going to either be using spells or card effects uh, to gather this. And then, of course, there's certain weapons and characters that will give you it as well. And you need this in order to play your cards, which you can replenish at the end of every round, which is after all your characters tap. And so utilizing that is very important. Um, another thing to note, too, is the card quality is really nice. Uh, the die that it gives you is very high quality as well. I actually really like the die that it gives us. And uh, you're going to be using these little red crystals, the standardized red crystals you can get pretty much anywhere uh, to denote either your damage or your uh, weapons, getting the skill bonuses, and of course, uh, your mana that you're going to be using in the game, the spell power. And um, there's a lot of different types of currency, but generally all works with these little cubes here. It makes it really easy and it gives you enough to where that's all you're going to need, specifically because you're only ever going to have four characters. I don't see any characters that ever can res or come back and you don't have like a, a sideline of extra characters. So you have to value these characters based on what you need in order for yourself to get the strategy that you want to go on. Sometimes you're going to sacrifice characters and that works well and fine. The rulebook could use an update. There's a lot of little little things in the game that it's not really specifically explaining, like for instance, class skills. I have no idea what they are because they do not state that in the rules. Maybe it has to do with deck construction. I'm not sure. Uh, there's also certain spells in here that require have the skill limits. I don't know what those do either. Um, but as far as like, for instance, uh, how much skill, uh, spirit points you need, which is the currency. I keep like missing that name, but they're called spirit points. Um, that's very easy. You spend the spirit points, you do what it says. In the top right hand corner, it'll tell you if it's a jumper, if it's a longevity card, or if it's a basic one. And uh, to say you guys time a longevity has kind of like a little like beam uh sorry a jumper has a long beam the longevity one has kind of got this like uh, other little symbol on it. i think it's like an infinity symbol um that will last throughout the entire time of play it's kind of like an enchantment which may or may not be in this specific deck here. It's not, but uh, it's going to have a symbol that isn't that one, and the jumper one. And then, of course, the ones that don't, that you can only play on your turn, won't have a symbol underneath them at all. They're also going to have a unique uh, class uh, system or like element system that you can only play with certain characters. So uh, deck construction will be really interesting with this one. I've only basically tried to make one deck with this, and it was complex. You have to really understand how the game works in order to do the deck construction to do it correctly, as opposed to just using the base game decks, which is what I would strongly suggest as you begin this game, uh, but you'll start learning how characters work and what weapons work better for them, switching out weapons for certain characters or against certain characters when the time is right and how to use them is important. Some weapons will give you a lot of attack, some of them will give you the spirit uh, skill, uh, spirit points in order to gain more currency throughout the game that will allow you to use more cards, and so there's all this different combinational stuff here. But like I said, there's just a few little things that don't specifically make a huge amount of sense because the rules don't cover it. So if there's like an actual like larger rule book somewhere out there, that would probably be your best bet to check like actions there's a car there's specific weapons that have actions on them do those allow you to uh turn your character over and not use a, sp a cast and or uh, or an attack is that part of it or is it in addition to because i know you can use skills whenever you want in the game uh provided it's on your turn or if it's a jumper card whenever the time allows you to do so um but overall pretty simple straightforward game choose a character attack cast or wait pass after turning it over back and forth rinse and repeat, doing damage as quickly as you possibly can to remove those characters and overall reduce all your character, uh, your opponent's characters to the void and then you will win. If you like tactical based card games with interchangeability, with unique classes and unique characters, and of course the ability to switch weapons in and out and play certain spells when you want to play them, uh, obviously customizable combat as well, this is one I would, I would suggest you take a look at. This one I had a lot of fun with, me and Callie played, me and my friend John played, and we thoroughly enjoyed 
enjoyed our playthroughs of the game, despite the main aspects of not really understanding every little thing in the game. Because this has got an expandable aspect to it as well. You're going to have booster packs that you can add and gives you new characters and creatures and all that kind of stuff, weaponry. And you have to take certain ones out and put certain ones in. And you'll need to have some time investment in this one in order to really fully grasp everything that it has to offer for you. So if you like the artwork and you don't mind the fact that it's got a few rules that you're not really sure on, maybe as they, I guess, maybe the Kickstarter or as they produce this, they redo the rules just a little bit to make it a little more clarity. Uh, this is going to be a solid little game. Really quick, simple, easy to understand with a lot of customizability. I enjoyed my playthroughs of Raza Owen and I hope you do too. You can go ahead and check the link down below in the description if it's something you'd like to pick up. Uh, most of you guys who like trading card games or customizable card games is pro probably going to enjoy this one. I at least want to give it a try. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review for the game Raza Owen. If it's something you'd like to go ahead and take a look at, like I said before, there's a link in the description and there's a ton of different options that you can use to customize this game with booster packs, weapon packs, and of course the base starter decks that I'll all allow you to kind of combine them and utilize them to your heart's content. So there's a lot of replayability that's going to go on in this game. You can also go ahead and comment down this video. Let me know if you played this game before, something you're interested in, why or why not. Hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification button to go ahead and give us more um uh, more availability to allow you to see more of our videos here. If you like videos like this, more uh, card games, new ones that you haven't seen before, then this is probably something you should do, and we greatly do appreciate it. We have a live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one every week, and we stream it on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, so it's available to you on any of those platforms. Uh, Moonshell is currently going to have uh, tomorrow out for backer kit, so you're going to get all that wonderful stuff to be able to purchase our game if you're interested in that. There'll be a link down below as well in most of our videos up and coming as, as long as that store is open. And of course, Patreon members, thank you so much for supporting us. We'll have another update for you, a little bonus update as far as some unique new content for our next game that we're producing. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to sending all of your warriors to the void next time.